Hello and welcome to another one of these ADD videos. Today we're going to look at some more advanced naming examples. So let's get started. So the first one we're going to look at is iron. Here. And has chlorine here. So this is a metal and a non-metal. So we know that the metal and non is ionic in nature, meaning there's a transfer of electrons. So now we got to ask ourselves, do we use the stock system or not? Remember, we're just going by the, the flow chart. Does it have a metal? Yes. Okay. Do we need to use the stock system? Does it have, is it a multivalent ion? So if you don't remember your ions, you would need to refer to this and you would see that iron has a possibility of being plus two or iron can be a plus three. So it's multivalent. So because it's multivalent, we multivalent means that it can form more than one charge. Because it's multivalent, we have to use the stock system and we have to identify the charge of this iron. So the way we do that is we look at chlorine. We know that iron is either going to be a two or a three. That's a plus two or plus three. Or chlorine, which is a halogen that has a negative one. So if I move this one down here, the only way I could have a three come down here is if the iron was a three plus. Charge and a minus one. Okay, so as a result, your final answer would be iron three chloride. All right, so same scenario with this next one. This is a metal, non-metal, so it's ionic. And because it's ionic, we got to ask, is tin multivalent? If you don't know your list, we come over here and we see that tin is over here uh, in the plus two charges as well as in the plus four charges. So it is multivalent, we have to use a stock system. So we have to figure out what's going on. And we write down the two. Because sulfur is in the sixth group or column, we know that it has a minus two oxidation number. And if I were to move that over here, I should see SN2 and then some sulfur, right? But because the two has canceled out, that means that this two was actually multiplied to get this a two. So our choices are either two or four. And this has to be a minus two. So let's look at our two options. If I did SN2, S2 versus SN2, S4. Now the question is, which one of these reduces to our original? Well, if you were to cancel out the common twos, this would give you SNS. That's not what we had. But this would give you what we desire after we divide out that common two. We want our compound to be in its uh, empirical formula form, meaning it's got the lowest possible uh, subscripts here. They're completely divided out. SN2S4 could be considered a uh, molecular form, which is a multiple of the empirical form. But that's a whole different video. 
So let's move on. So here the name, because it was a plus four that created this, would be 10 for using the stock system sulfide. Alright, um, on this one, lithium is an alkali metal, it's in group 1, sulfate is a polyatomic ion, hopefully you're familiar enough with the flow chart, and then what you do here is you're going to write lithium. sulfate. So you just list the polyatomic ion and you use the English name for the metal. Here we've got two nonmetals. So it's a covalent molecular, it's a covalent bond and molecular compound, uh, not ionic. So therefore we use the prefixes. So this would be hepta, phosphorus, running out of space, uh, hexasulfide. All right, so you should be able to get pretty familiar with these. Uh, definitely memorize your polyatomic ions. Uh, work with this flow chart as much as you can. It will be helpful. I guarantee you, if you do those things, you should have no problems. Make some note cards for these flashcards, or for these uh, Ion, sorry, a little tired. Uh, the more you do, the easier it becomes. So practice, practice, practice. Thank you and have a nice day.